What the fudge is frequency separation? Have you ever been editing a photo and just could not get rid of a sun flare? This is where frequency separation comes into play. Originally, this technique was developed in order to smooth out skin tones in Photoshop like you see on those hyper smooth models. But this technique has also been adapted for use by landscape photographers like you and myself. The idea behind frequency separation is to separate the texture and the color into two separate channels where you can adjust them independently. I know this sounds super confusing. It's easier if I just show you. So let's hop into Photoshop. Here we have a photo from the deserts of Utah, and it looks nice at a glance, but if we zoom in, we can see that we have some kind of obnoxious sun flare going on in the landscape with these extra colors going on down here. So this is a perfect use to apply frequency separation to the image. Now there are a bunch of ways to do it. However, I'm going to show you the most simple method. Now we're going to go and click on our background layer here, and we're going to hold down Command and then hit J twice to create two copies of our background layer. I'm gonna turn off the top one. I'm going to click on our first layer, and we're going to call this our color layer. And we're going to go up to Filter, down to Blur, and go to Gaussian Blur. I like to set mine around 10 pixels. This shot was taken on a pretty high megapixel camera. It's a Sony a7R5, so it's got about 60 megapixels. If you have a smaller megapixel camera, you might want to set the radius to five, but we're gonna go ahead and go with 10, just like that. And then I'm going to click on the layer above, going to reveal that, and this layer we're going to rename Texture. And from here, we're going to go up to Filter, down to other and create a high pass filter. And you're going to remember that you need to set the radius to whatever you set your blur pixel amount by. So in this case, we set our blur for the color layer to 10 pixels. So we need to have our high pass filter at a 10 pixel radius. I'm going to hit okay. We're gonna change our blend mode from normal down to linear light. And we're gonna change our fill to 50% opacity. I'm going to group these together and add a new folder. And then we can see if I turn this off and on, nothing should change. Our bottom layer is just the background layer. This only exists so we can see a before and after. And we can see again, if I toggle this off, nothing has changed. We have successfully separated this into our texture and our color layer. We're not going to touch our texture layer in this case. We're only going to be adjusting the color. I am then going to grab our clone stamp tool. We want to make sure that our hardness is set to zero and our opacity and flow is set to 100. And I am going to then use the Alt or Option key to sample a nearby color. And then I'm just going to brush in that color from here over here. Going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to sample a nearby color and then just brush in that color. It might take a couple of different passes. That's not a problem. Maybe at the top there, just like so. And then you can see before and after, before and after. This image here is going to be a little bit more complicated. You can see again, we're shooting into the sun and the sky looks okay. But if we zoom in over here and look on the landscape, we can see that we have kind of this green sun flare hitting on this hoodoo and kind of giving the, this weird color cast. So we're going to follow the exact same steps. I'm going to hold down Command and hit J twice to create two copies of our background layer. We're again, just for organizational purposes, going to rename them, the bottom one color and the top one texture. We're going to turn off the top layer Going to go down to color and go up to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Again, 10 pixels, that's gonna be okay. We're gonna turn on the top layer, go up to filter, and then again, we're going to apply a high pass filter to this with 10 pixels. And then we're gonna change the blend mode from normal down to linear light and change our fill to 50%. We're going to group them together and then again, just like before, I'm going to click on our color layer, grab our clone stamp tool, 
Again, making sure that our hardness is at zero and our opacity and flow are at 100. And just like before, I'm going to sample somewhere along here and then just brush over this sun flare on the hoodoo. So in this case, let's sample right along this line here. Let's make our, our brush size or our stamp size a little bit bigger. Hold down Alt or Option and click to sample that. And then you can see as I drag this around, you can kind of see the preview of the colors that it is sampling. And I want to match this up to all right along here, right where you can see that line coming through. I want that line to match in between the two spots. So just like that, just like so. And then we can see before, oh, excuse me, before and after before and after, and you can see how we're just brushing away and using the colors, just the nearby colors, to sample and stamp away just that kind of existing green color cast from the sun flare. Let's again do this from the other side to this section of sun flare right here. So let's again, you hold down the Alt or Option key to sample a nearby color going to move over the area I want to brush out. I'm going to click and then just drag up and down just a little bit until that section is brushed away. I can see there's just a little bit more here, so I'm going to do one more time. This time I'm going to change the opacity down to around 50%. I'm going to hold down Option again, just like that. Try to line up this line in the landscape and go just like that, just like so to erase any of that sun flare in the landscape. We still have this kind of rainbow patch right here. This might be a little bit trickier. Let's again change our opacity. We're gonna go back up to 100 and I'm going to see if we can just brush away like so. This one might be a little bit harder. Let's undo that. I'm going to choose a little bit higher and just try to brush this away. I can say that actually did a pretty good job. I might have to go in here and use like a remove tool to get rid of that last little bit of stubborn color in the landscape. But let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And then let's turn off and on our frequency separation layers. So we can see before and after, before and after. And you can see we still have all of the texture here. All of this aligns, the colors look good now though, and we don't have any of that obnoxious sun flare. This last photo is going to be just a little bit trickier than the previous two before it, because you can see we have so many little dust spots and lens flares in the camera. Whenever you have a dusty or dirty lens, that is going to increase the number of these little spots that you see in your photograph. In this case, we're going to start off just a little bit different than the previous two photos because I've actually already created an action in Photoshop to automate the creating new layers and creating the frequency separation channels. So we just go up to window, down to actions, and then down here at the bottom, I have frequency separation. I click on that and then click on play. And then just after a second or so, it will then create that new folder with the frequency separated layers inside. Down in the description of this video, there is a link to download this action yourself. This time, instead of using our clone stamp tool, I'm actually going to use our spot healing brush tool. And for type of spot healing, we want to be on content aware. And again, we want to make sure that our hardness is at zero for this. So just like so, and then I'm going to zoom in here and just brush away each of these little spots in the photograph. So just like so, brushing away any of these little sun flares in the photograph. Now, in this case, I think that it's probably going to require a little bit more work in this one. Uh, looking at these things, if I zoom in here, some of this stuff has a texture to the edge of the sun flare meaning that I won't be able to get rid of it with just color alone. And you're kind of left with a couple of choices of having to go in and doing some adjustments on the texture layer 
or merging all of these layers in our frequency separation layer to one and then adjusting the entire layer as is without separated channels via remove tool or content to wear fill tool. In this case though, we have a lot of a lot of uh, kind of difficult lines in the background because they're sand dunes. So you may end up with wonky results where it doesn't quite fit in. And this is one of the reasons why I chose this photo because it is on the more difficult side of things to work with. So let's go ahead and try our best. You know, if we don't get it perfect, that's totally fine, but we're just going to do what we can to get rid of any of these extra sun flares and sunspots in the photo. So just go in just like this all throughout the photo, everywhere we see something that's not quite right, just like that, and maybe one more pass for this little dot right there that's looking good, and we can go and kind of make big sweeping brush strokes here to try and get rid of some of that kind of iridescent look in between uh, the uh, rays on this sun star here. You know, sometimes sun stars can be really nice depending on the lens though. Sometimes they can give some kind of iridescent multicolored results, which don't always look so hot. So I'm just gonna go through, make a couple of passes with this uh, content aware fill spot healing brush. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't, and that's okay. Say so that didn't work out so well. So let's try one more on this, one more pass on this thing. Try and get rid of some of this kind of weird iridescent color. Go through here, just like so. And again, this is a pretty extreme example. I think that most people probably wouldn't have something so, um, so egregious to fix but I'm showing you kind of the techniques of how we might be able to do that. So just like so. Again, some of the stuff might require a couple of different passes. Let's zoom out maybe a little bit over here, maybe a little bit down there. And I think we're looking okay. Let's just go, go ahead and compare this to before and after, before and after. And you can see, maybe it's not 100% perfect, but you can tell how much of a job or how good of a job that this frequency separation has done, just like so. And then again, any further adjustments are probably going to have to be done in a different method. And that is frequency separation. If you'd like to join me on a workshop or photo adventure, head over to my website, warnerwildernessphotography.com. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.